It is a luxury hotel like none other, a unique blend of comfort and style, service and sophistication with an intriguing past and an architectural pedigree, sweeping views of the Charles River and the Boston skyline, 298 guest rooms, four distinctive venues for drinks and dining, each with its own creative approach to entertainment. Nestled along the banks of the Charles River in the picturesque Beacon Hill neighborhood of Boston, the Liberty Hotel is the only hotel in the city on the Esplanade and is conveniently located within walking distance to shopping, dining, and a variety of local attractions. As you sit in the hotel's 90-foot rotunda lobby, enjoying a cocktail and conversation, you may find it difficult to imagine the hotel's arresting history. For 139 years, this building was the site of Boston's infamous Charles Street Jail. Its residents ranged from small-time criminals to notorious gangsters. Legend has it, famed anarchists Sacco and Vanzetti did time here, as did Nation of Islam leader Malcolm X and the men behind the Great Brinks robbery. People were held here awaiting trial, and typically that meant a relatively short period of time, although for more serious charges, someone could be here for a year or a couple of years, but that was not typical. In the early 1900s, the jail housed a group of female suffragettes arrested for interrupting a speech by President Woodrow Wilson. And during World War II, the commander and crew of captured German U-boat 873 were housed at the Charles Street Jail after surrendering to the Allies. Security was tight at the jail, but not tight enough for one local mobster. Elmer Trigger Burke was a hitman who came to Boston to shoot Spex O'Keefe, a uh, mastermind of the Boston Brinks robbery. He shot O'Keefe, but only wounded him, and Burke was caught and locked up at the Charles Street Jail. With the help of accomplices on the outside, one day while Trigger Burke was in the jail recreation yard, his accomplices broke into the jail through a building on the perimeter wall. Burke then ran through the gatehouse door and out to Charles Street to a waiting car, and they made their escape over the Longfellow Bridge. At the Liberty Hotel today, there is a granite archway. That archway is the door through which Trigger Burke made his escape. Legendary baseball player Babe Ruth may have left the Boston Red Sox for New York, but he returned in 1926 to take a tour of the Charles Street Jail. He must have known what it would one day become when he told the New York Times, this isn't a jail, it's like a hotel. One of the jail's most infamous guests was Boston Alderman James Michael Curley. In 1904, Curley was caught taking a civil service exam for a friend and incarcerated at Charles Street. While serving his 60-day sentence, Curley ran for re-election, in jail, and won. He went on to serve four terms as mayor of Boston, two terms as a U.S. congressman, and one as governor of Massachusetts. Well, you know, it says a lot about Boston politics, I guess. No matter how famous or infamous the inmates, it is the building itself that should be celebrated. The original structure was designed by architect Gridley J. F. Bryant and completed in 1851. With its austere monolithic stonework, it is considered one of the best examples of the Boston granite style of architecture. Gridley J. F. Bryant was one of the premier architects in the city of Boston and he specialized in using granite. The architect shared office space with a prison reform expert named Reverend Lewis Dwight and incorporated many of Dwight's ideas for a humane prison into his building design. The two of them actually wanted to create a brand new jail that would be a rehabilitation facility rather than just a place for people to be incarcerated and forgotten about. This building originally had atriums on either side of the cell blocks that allowed each prisoner to look out through those great three-story windows. And that same, those same three-story windows, of course, bring fresh air in so that the prisoners were treated with some respect. The jail was built in a cross with four wings of Quincy granite, extending from a central rotunda with a 90-foot atrium, what is now the hotel's grand lobby. It held 220 solid granite cells, 
each 8 by 10 feet long. Everything about it was imposing. I mean, it was an old building, a lot of steel and granite. You really didn't get a flavor of the building until you came out onto what was called the guardroom floor, which is now the hotel lobby. And from there, you could look up and you had a commanding view of the cell areas. And you were also at the same time kind of overwhelmed, not by just by the scope of the, of the building, but the noises, the voices, the sounds of steel doors closing. By the 1950s, the jail began to suffer from overcrowding and deterioration. The inevitable outcome of an old building is we had antiquated plumbing, we had quirky electrical systems, we had uneven heating and cooling. In 1973, the poor living conditions led Charles Street inmates to revolt. The incident spurred federal court judge W. Arthur Garrity to see what conditions were like for himself by spending a night in the jail on Murderer's Row. Everybody on the staff was well aware that he was here, so he couldn't totally blend in. You know, I, I don't know if he got VIP treatment. Later that year, the courts ruled that the jail violated the constitutional rights of the prisoners housed there and should be closed. But it took several years for a new facility to be built, so it wasn't until 1990 that the guards closed the doors to the Charles Street Jail for good. We decided to make one last round of the facility and we climbed the stairs up to the fifth floor and walked up and down the, the tiers as we had done many, many times over the years. And although they were all empty, we came downstairs and kind of joking to one another, we turned in our head count for the night and walked out the big steel door closed behind us and it was a very long time before I came back in here. But this impressive granite structure has come back to life in a new role as one of the country's most stunning and inspired reuse developments. A luxury hotel in the heart of historic Boston, the result of an expansive reconstruction that has transformed the Charles Street Jail into the Liberty Hotel. You know, the very first time that I set foot into the Charles Street Jail building, I was both overwhelmed by the volumetrics of the space, but I was also daunted by the decrepitude of the building itself. Paint was peeling, uh, great amounts of junk had been stored in here. Nobody had actually been in the building. The building had not been operated for a good 15 or more years. And it was just in very desperate shape. But at the same time, there was no question in my mind that this was a building of tremendous strength and uh, beauty. Undaunted by the condition of the facility, developers Carpenter and & Company and architects Cambridge 7 Associates set about bringing the building back to life. Crews painstakingly cleaned the granite exterior, removed layers of paint from interior brick walls, and carefully dislodged entire cell blocks. It was an architectural joy, but also an engineering nightmare. In 1848, architect Gridley J.F. Bryant drafted a dramatic cupola to sit atop the rotunda of the original jail. But when time and money ran short, the cupola's size was reduced and in 1949, it was removed altogether. With the Liberty Hotel project, the cupola would find its place atop the rotunda again, this time the full size Bryant intended. We relied very heavily on his original sketches about how to recreate that cupola so that we could bring the building back to the spirit that Bryant had originally conceived it with. The jail's status as a National Historic Landmark created another challenge requiring developers to adhere to strict architectural guidelines. We work very closely with the agencies involved, the Park Service, Mass Historic, Boston Landmarks, the Boston Redevelopment Authority, to make sure that every decision we made about this building was a decision that was in its best interest of truly preserving and enhancing the monument itself. To ensure that none of the bad elements from the jail's past life remained in the new building, hotel developers took the unusual step of bringing in Buddhist monks to cleanse the building of any evil spirits. Various people told me there might be bad spirits there and feng shui consultants and sort of people like that and, and I decided we ought to have the monks come and, uh, and relieve us of anything. In September of 2007, after five years of planning and construction, the former Charles Street Jail was reborn as the Liberty Hotel. We liberated the building. 
The catwalks where guards once kept watch on inmates are now elegant balconies overlooking the hotel's spacious lobby. You'll see that we've used a glass handrail and then we've mounted the original handrails, which are those wrought iron and cast iron components, right in front of the glass in various areas so that you get a little pastiche of the history against something that's very modern. With its 90-foot ceiling and three-story oculus windows, the Liberty Bar, located in our lobby, is a perfect meeting spot, a place to relax, enjoy a cocktail, or experience one of the hotel's signature Liberty affairs. Past the reception desk, you can learn more about the building's infamous past in the Liberty's historical gallery. 18 of the hotel's 298 guest rooms are in the historic jail and have kept their original character, but with modern amenities. The rest are in a newly constructed adjoining 16-story tower where guests can enjoy breathtaking views of Boston. For the ultimate in luxury, spend the night in the Liberty's spacious Ebersol Suite. With 2,200 square feet of comfort, amazing views, and a spectacular terrace overlooking the Charles River, it's no wonder the Ebersol Suite has been named one of the top hotel suites in the world by Elite Traveler magazine. An incredible dining experience is just steps away at Clink, the Liberty's signature restaurant. Clink's creative menu highlights North Atlantic seafood, heirloom produce, artisan cheeses, and locally sourced menu items from the region's farms and fisheries. The dining room features vestiges of original jail cells and an open kitchen, while butcher block tables and granite accents add to its contemporary style. Clink's vibrant social scene spills out into the Liberty Bar, where you can sip on a signature cocktail while taking in views of the catwalks above the vast lobby space. Downstairs, award-winning celebrity chef Lydia Shire brings her bold interpretation of traditional Italian cuisine to Scampo. It's not a pure Italian restaurant because, of course, I throw in something that's a little Indian or a little Moroccan or something. It's a crowd pleaser. It's a comfort food place. And if you're looking for cocktails and company, nothing beats the energy of Alibi or the sophistication of Catwalk Bar overlooking the Liberty Lobby, exclusive to hotel guests. <laughs> the Liberty Hotel has become a fixture in the local community, offering complimentary events to hotel guests and the public through Liberty Affairs. Every Monday, it's Major Mondays. Cure your Monday blues with Monday Blues. Head down to the Liberty to unwind to the sounds of live blues music. Tuesdays, it's all about fine art. Our Gallery Night series showcases works by local galleries and artists. The sweet sounds of acoustic jazz fill the Liberty Bar every Wednesday night at Whole Note Wednesdays. And you can get a look at the latest fashions by local Boston designers and boutiques each week during fashionably late Thursdays. Music from Boston's top DJs fills the Liberty Bar every Friday and Saturday night at Beat Weekends. The Liberty is a very popular luxury hotel, but we're also popular with the people who live in our neighborhood. While many hotels are content to provide a bed and a roof, the Liberty creates truly immersive experiences that collectively we call our Liberty Affairs. On Saturdays, stay in shape with Winter Workout, a complimentary group fitness class at the Liberty, taught by instructors from Equinox. During the summer months, enjoy the Liberty outdoors with yoga in the yard on Saturdays. The Liberty Hotel is one of the only dog-friendly hotels in the city. Every Monday and Wednesday evening during the summer months, it's canines and cocktails in the yard for yappier hour. There is something for everyone at the Liberty. It's a truly unique setting for weddings. Our expert planners and culinary team will help turn your vision into reality, whether it's for five or 500 people. And corporate events of all sizes. Our event space features natural light, stylish design, as well as unique features such as the rotunda lobby and the catwalks. Throughout the Liberty Hotel, guests receive exemplary service from friendly, attentive, and welcoming staff. It's a place where people can feel comfortable in casual clothes. I want that the service be sort of 
not in your face, not fancy, just absolutely drop dead high quality in a, in a subtle way, in a friendly way, in a warm way. The Liberty is truly a quintessential Boston experience. It's a remarkable combination of grand architecture, rich history, and the amenities of a modern luxury hotel. Whether you're in Boston for work or for play, we guarantee your visit to the historic Liberty Hotel will be unforgettable.